There's about 50,000 surgeries in the United States today, uh, every year, uh, for either repair or replacement of the mitral valve. Now, interestingly, every year there's 125,000 new diagnoses of severe mitral regurgitation. So if you compare 50,000 surgeries to 125,000 diagnoses, you're also identifying a treatment gap of about 75,000 patients. Today there's um, a good surgery uh, that fixes it. Unfortunately, the surgery is highly invasive. It's traditional open heart surgery. They do a sternotomy, which is a sawing open of your sternum, then they spread your ribs, and then they, put, they stop your heart by putting it on cardiopulmonary bypass. Um, they can then go on and do a very effective repair of your mitral valve and, and correct what's wrong with it. The problem is there's a certain number of patients that are either too healthy, meaning their mitral regurgitation is not causing them to be sick enough that you as a surgeon or the patient wants to undergo a highly invasive procedure to fix it, or they're too sick to tolerate the rigors of open heart surgery. We have a, a, a way to, on a beating heart, without cracking the chest, in other words, in a sternal sparing way, to uh, uh, enable the implantation of artificial chordae tendinae. Here comes the device in. It's going to go up now and grab a moving leaflet on a beating heart. It throws a stitch, which is the artificial cord, through that leaflet. And the interesting thing here is because the, leaf, the heart is still beating, the doctor is able to watch on echo when he has the appropriate tension, the appropriate length on that new artificial cord, he's able to see real clearly on transesophageal echo that he has cured that patient's mitral regurgitation. So he gets the appropriate length, ties it down, and the patient is taken care of at that point. Well, we've got two patients, two humans that have already been treated at the Mayo Clinic um, that are now a year and a half on one patient and two years on the other patient. Uh, that have had their mitral regurgitation totally fixed using this technology. Um, so it's, it's a great head start and, and a great confidence builder that when we go into a feasibility trial and ultimately into a pivotal trial, uh, that we will get the kind of clinical results we hope for. Neocord fixes what's actually broken. The other technologies that are coming forward are working a little bit more around the edges. Uh, we're going directly to the source of the problem a ruptured or an elongated cord, and we're replacing that, fixing the prolapsing leaflet, and eliminating the mitral regurgitation. There's been a fair amount written about the potential market for mitral valve repair uh, for, for technologies that enable minimally invasive treatments for mitral valve repair, and it's been estimated to be well into the billions. Uh, I'd say on the low end, a billion dollar market, on the high end, two to two and a half billion dollar market. We actually think we'll represent a profit opportunity for the hospital at the current DRG levels. There's um, a strong likelihood that the length of stay will drop rather dramatically with the use of our technology. Uh, today the STS database would say that a typical length of stay for cordal repair, uh, mitral valve repair kind of procedures is in the neighborhood of six to eight days. And our surgeons are telling us that with a lateral a thoracotomy on a beating heart that the length of stay would probably be down in the one to two day length of stay. Well, we actually like our competitive position uh, quite a bit. We've, um, I, I use the terminology, what's the predicate surgery? Because all of these new technologies that are coming are based on uh, surgery, uh, are based on techniques that have been used in the current open surgery environment. The company that is working right now on, on an edge-to-edge -edge repair um, the, the literature on edge-to-edge -edge, uh, repair, it's also called the Alfieri stitch, um, the literature doesn't support that it's uh, uh, been had terrific outcomes associated with it. It's uh, been a useful bailout technique for a number of, of, of surgeons. So it's a useful technique uh, when other techniques have, have not worked on a given patient. Cordal repair, uh, our technology, uh, has actually been around for over 30 years. We'll finish up product development the tail end of this year. We'll go into a feasibility trial. Uh, we'll commence a feasibility trial the tail end of, of 2008. I just completed about a 10-year uh, period of time with Guidant Corporation. I had several different uh, vice president level positions there. 
uh, in, uh, in the sales and marketing area. I was very fortunate to be able to recruit in as uh, uh, my vice president of research and development, a man by the name of John Zencraft, who is a uh, former formerly head of all research and development for guidant cardiac rhythm management as well. Uh, he's very used to managing uh, uh, literally over a thousand engineers and, and dozens of, of R&D projects at once. Uh, caught him at the right time and he's, uh, he's uh, very much enjoying being part of a small but uh, high potential business right now. Thank you.